This is Wild Chronicles. I'm Boyd Mapson. The wilderness of Yellowstone National Park has got its wild soul back again. The wolves are thriving. But since the mid-1990s, when they returned, one pack has captured the imagination of both the public and the rangers who work here, the wolves of Druid Peak. And one thing about wolves that draws a lot of attention is if you've ever seen their eyes. They actually don't look at you, they look through you. To keep track of the wolves, park biologist Doug Smith tries to keep radio collars on about a third of the animals at any given time. Tracking the wolves gives him an intimate glimpse into the lives of Yellowstone's top predators. I love going to work every day. I love trying to figure out what these animals are doing, their stories, their interactions with the other animals in Yellowstone. The wolves he came to know best were the pack released in the shadow of Druid Peak in 1996. The alpha male was shot after wandering out of the park, and the leadership of the seven-member pack fell to the alpha female, number 40. She was beautiful and violent. A coyote approaching her kill was asking for deadly trouble. The first alpha female was wolf number 40. She was very aggressive, and she ruled with an iron fist. A growing pack, the Druids developed a reputation for killing wolves from neighboring packs as well as coyotes. But then, a dark stranger showed up, number 21. A young male from a rival pack, 21 decided to take a huge gamble and set about courting the fierce alpha female. In a remarkable cat and mouse drama, he managed to win over the Iron Lady and became the alpha male of the pack. But someone else had an eye for this stranger, the Iron Lady's dark sister, number 42. Known as the Cinderella Wolf, number 42 was in constant trouble with her alpha sister. She could never be quite submissive enough to please the Iron Lady. She suffered her sister's beatings and sometimes seemed ready to leave the pack until one momentous night. The next morning dawned on a battered and mauled Iron Lady lying in a ditch by the road. Despite the park biologist's best efforts, she would die before the day was out. Killed, the biologists think, by the Cinderella wolf and her offspring. And then something remarkable happened. The once cringing Cinderella took command. She was now the alpha female, and she also took the Iron Lady's mate as her own. Under their leadership, the Druid pack flourished. By 2001, the Druid Peak Pack grew to an astonishing 37 wolves, the largest known wolf pack in history. The legendary alpha wolves, 42 and 21, are gone now. Doug Smith has watched the Druid Peak Pack fall back to just seven wolves. It lost five new pups to a virus earlier this year but they still roam their historic territory. The pack has a new alpha male. Other young males went off to join neighboring packs. The cyclical drama of Yellowstone's canine kings and queens continues now. And the reintroduction of wolves to the park has now become a model for saving endangered carnivores around the world. I think the reintroduction of wolves to Yellowstone is one of the scientific opportunities of the century. To be a part of this from the beginning and document how this system will change because of the reintroduction of a top carnivore that belongs here 
is a, a huge scientific opportunity that needs to be done.